Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Spirituality Out Loud podcast. I am Leslie Seidel, and I just want to take a moment to say that if you are enjoying this podcast, please, please take a moment to rate it, like it, subscribe. It really goes a long way to helping and spreading the word and helping other people find us. So now for today, it is my honor to have Suzanne Giesman who is an evidential medium who provides stunning evidence of life after death. She's a spiritual teacher and an author of 12 books. She's a former U.S. Navy commander who served as a Navy commanding officer, special assistant to the chief of Na naval operations and the aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Um, I personally have taken class with her. She has a great class called Serving Spirit, where she teaches people to be able to create their own personal connection to spirit. And I also have got her new meditations where she combines, I think it's called Hemisync, to help create that connection. Hi, Susan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. It's such an honor to have you. I was so excited that you oh, said thanks, yes. thanks, Leslie. Oh, of course. I like to try to say yes to everything. Yeah. So the whole podcast, um, as you know, is about hearing people's progression over time in their spiritual life. And so we start to come into the beginning. So what was it like where you were raised, right? Was your family religious? Did you have a connection? Did it, was a spiritual life something that was important? And, and if it was, how was it for you? Like, well, what do you remember? Yeah. I remember being in about five years old and my parents took us to a Unitarian church because they I, they must have felt they either wanted a social connection or they thought the kids needed religion, but it didn't last long. And we were shunted off to the Sunday school and I, I don't have many memories of it. Didn't, didn't last long at all. And that was it. That was my entire church experience growing up. They, uh, we, we didn't talk about religion. It was an unspoken thing in our family that you just don't go there. My mother's side of the family, her sister and brother, went the total other side of that spectrum. And there was disdain expressed from my mother about that. And my father just didn't talk about it. So uh, we knew that that's just something we don't talk about. And I never knew why. I felt a little envious of the kids that were in the church groups at school and the young living or young life groups in college. And I just wasn't part of that. Uh, so it was like a non-factor growing up for me. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I had a very similar experience where it just wasn't, I don't think there was a negativity about it, but there just wasn't, never came up, kind of. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was older that I kind of thought, wait, what do you guys believe, right? Like it never, yeah, it never yeah. occurred to me. Yeah, I, I'd say that my, yeah, my parents were either atheist or agnostic. No, because we just didn't even talk about it, which is funny now because I'd want to know, you know? I want to pick their brains and find out. Yeah. So, um, so then what happens over time? Because what you did was you joined, you know, you joined the Navy. Yeah. And uh, I still, then my whole focus was on my career, on serving my country, on being the best Navy officer I could be, and didn't have a need for anything else. Uh, I didn't realize that this kind of emptiness that I felt inside a lot uh, was a spiritual emptiness. I know that now in hindsight, now that I've discovered this light that we all have inside, I was the kind of person that, uh, you know, I stayed in. A marriage longer than I should have because I was afraid of being alone and now I know we're never alone and mm. that we have guides and helpers and our loved ones on the other side are, are as near as our thoughts and uh, I just didn't know that in the past well so I don't know much about the military right um, so my question is how is how is a spiritual life or a religion life is it talked about at all there is oh, it a, sure uh, it, well, it's totally, it's separate from work, but uh, it, there are a lot of people who have just a very wonderful, normal uh, religious life. Uh, there would be announcements about religious events held at the chapel on base. Uh, ships offer uh, religious services. So the military honors people's beliefs of all beliefs. They're very egalitarian in that regard, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. 
And so you were never called to find out or think about it during that no. process? No, it was just there. Okay. Yeah. And so I know a bit of your story of kind of how things shifted over time. So why don't we hear a little bit? So, so now you are, you went into the military. You've never really thought about it. You do say that you feel an emptiness, but it wasn't something you questioned. I filled it with food for years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, it was, uh, I think because of the military training, I was physically fit. And if I would overeat out of cravings to fill something, that was my drug of choice was food. Mm -hmm. uh, if I would overeat, I would just counterbalance that with excess exercise for the next couple of days. So I never got overweight and people look at me and say, you had a problem with food. Oh yeah, I had a big problem with food. It, I was out of control with food. That was that trying to feel that emptiness inside me. And now I don't deal with that at all. I think that was, actually, no, that has never come up. But that was part of my path of learning to trust my intuition and listening to my body and listening to that voice inside. Do I really need to eat this now? That was the start, but I didn't see that as a spiritual path. Yeah. Yeah, it is... Um... I, I too had a lot of issues with food, which I think most women, especially in the estates, let alone the rest of the world, have a go to food. We're, we're fed that, right? Eat this, all of this junk food. And, and I, I absolutely ended up in a 12 step program around food. And, oh, and, yeah. and so people, I went to those meetings. <laughs> huh? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. But yeah. people don't, they so rarely, accept a spiritual answer to the food problem. And, and so I find myself kind of like really championing that idea that the, the overabundance yeah. of food is a spiritual lacking. Right. So I, I I'm, yeah. it's nice to hear that that's your experience too. Yeah. My very first book was, is called conquer your cravings. But I've come so far on my spiritual path since then. If, if I rewrote it, it would be very different. But it talks about listening to the body. And, and I remember thinking at the time, this is why I went through all that. So if I could help one other person not go through that. I see all of that has a spiritual aspect to it. And it got me writing and, and really was a stepping stone to where I am today. So when you wrote that book, were you in this, like, so, so, so tell me kind of the timeline of where, where you are now, right? So you're yeah, I was in the is... Navy. I was in oh. the Navy when I wrote that book. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. But again, it didn't, to me, I didn't, it didn't think spiritual. I was just trying to, it was at that time more about the thoughts. You know, it, I realized that it was my thoughts that were leading me to overeat when I wasn't hungry. And so that was the start of the really turning to the mind over matter facet of life. Yeah. <laughs> Which we, we like here in the States. Yes, we oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about how you got to where you are now. Okay. So I was the aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs on 9-11. And uh, so hold on one second. So I didn't know this until I met you. So I just want to clarify the Joint Chiefs of Staff is the head of all of the armed forces in the United States. Yes, the, chair, yeah. the Joint Chiefs of Staff are the heads of all the services and the leader of, and that's a 1,300 person staff to run the Joint Armed Services. Then there's one officer who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and he is the head the highest ranking officer in the entire United States military. And his principal job is principal military advisor to the president. So he runs this 1300 member staff. His, he sets policy for the whole military at the highest levels and advises the president. And I was his aide, his right hand woman. It, it was amazing. Yeah. But anyway, so we were on our way to, to Europe on 9-11 in an aircraft that ultimately we, we turned around and flew back over the World Trade Center that was burning by that time, went back to the Pentagon. Our You're frozen. 
I don't hear you. Hold on. Keep talking or not. There we go. Oh, okay. there you are. You froze. Yeah. So yes, your sorry. internet's kind of going back and forth. I'm sorry, so. I'm right next to my router, so I don't know what the deal is. That's okay. That. We'll just yeah. go ahead and say, but, so Joy, uh, you were on 9-11 in an aircraft. Yeah, and uh, I was as devastated by that day as everybody else. It's funny, people think military are somehow different. We're just normal human beings who have training, you know? And, and, but really, it, these are all people just like you and me who were killed that day. And, and it, that is what had me questioning the big life questions. And I actually turned to traditional religion. I remember picking up pamphlets from various churches and thinking, maybe the answers to my questions are here. You know, what is life all about? And is there a God? And why do some people die when they do? That kind of thing. But that traditional religion, religion, it just wasn't cutting it for me because something, some of the things that I was reading and I had picked up through just American culture about traditional religion just didn't speak to my heart. There were loopholes in there. And it seemed like people twisted things around to their own purposes. And, I, and so I just kind of put that to the side and uh, retired from the Navy because of 9-11. I said, life is too short. My husband and I had this dream of going sailing in our sailboat and, and, and uh, let's do it now before some other thing happens. To, and uh, so anyway, that's the, the short story is I retired and we went sailing. We sold our house and cars and off we went. And I know that we're here to learn certain lessons for, for our soul's growth. And I hadn't, hadn't, evolved as much as I could have as a result of 9-11. And then my stepdaughter, Susan, uh, was killed at age 27. We got the news while we were sailing around the Mediterranean that she'd been uh, struck by lightning mm -hmm. at work. She was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And she was six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was her birthday. So she's been a lot on our minds uh, last few days. But uh, Leslie, I know that I've turned that tragedy into something really healing for other people because it was healing for me to discover that there's a whole lot more to this world and that the emptiness inside of us is really just an urging to discover it for ourselves, what's really out there. Yeah. And it's so beautiful because I, I, I do hold that to be true. There's like desires I have. Um, like for a child and for these things, I do see them as these spiritual growth opportunities, right? That is why they're on my heart. And yeah. And um, even to do this podcast, like I'm not clear where this is going to go or what it's going to do. And people keep asking me like, you know, what is your marketing? What is this? I, I don't know. I just know that it fills me up. I yeah. know that it's the right answer. I know that every time I have this talk conversation with one person, the answer is yes. Right. Yes. And, and so I think, I don't know where it's going to go, but this is the next right appropriate thing, yeah. right? In, yeah. in the path. And so you, you, you're in the middle of this tragedy and you've already started some seeking, but you haven't found a connection that, that is satisfying you. That's right. And did yeah. Ty, your husband's name is Ty. And yes. Did he have any seeking? No, and he, he still hasn't, <laughs> you, you know, years later, but he's satisfied with where he is and he he's he's grown with me i've seen changes in him but he doesn't meditate and he he doesn't read spiritual and metaphysical things whereas i'm obsessed with them mm -hmm. <laughs> but what brought about my change is that after susan was killed uh, i had been interested for years in these people like mediums who say they could talk to dead people i thought that the whole idea was fascinating so, and I'd read a few books about mediums and astral projection. Wow, you know, is there really another reality? But I just kind of dabbled in that. Never had any idea that I was psychic. Mm -hmm. I never saw spirits my whole life. So I'm not a born medium at all. And, uh, but when Susan died and I saw her body in the coffin, I suddenly knew, I just knew that it, that we are spirits and that it's our spirit that enlivens the body. Because looking at Susan's body, it's one of the most vibrant spirits I ever met, one of the most loving beings I ever knew, Susan. That body was not her. It was what it was missing was her spirit. 
And I suddenly just knew you couldn't kill that. So where is she? You know, oh, well, these mediums claim to be able to connect with people. I'm going to find myself a medium, but I'm going to connect with her too if she's really here. And I've heard about this thing called meditation. I'm going to start trying that. And that week that she was killed in June of 2006, I sat down to meditate and I fell asleep every time for three weeks, fell asleep every time. And said, this is not getting me anywhere, but I'm going to keep at it because I was, and I was committed. And, uh, Maybe people think I should have been committed. I don't well, know. No, no, I mean, so meditation is is um, a big component of all most major religions, right? So, of course. And so I'm kind of curious, what instruction did you do? Did you have, like, how, what, what was meditation for you? At this point, I, I don't remember what research I did. That was 2006. All I knew was I had to sit quietly, and they all talk about emptying your mind. So that's all I did. I just sat. We were living on our boat at the time, and I remember <laughs> going into the aft cabin to get away from my husband, sitting up on the bed, and just trying to empty my mind. And I'm of thinking, course, you fell asleep. This is not going anywhere. You know, this is not going anywhere at all. But I found myself becoming more peaceful and calm during the day, even with. 10, 20 minutes of this practice every day. And I started to intuitively know things about other people. It's like, I mean, things I would say that person's, their license plate says Minnesota, but you know, there's something about Michigan around them. And they'd say, oh, we really are from Michigan. I'm like, how did I know that? So that intrigued me. But what I didn't know is I, in that practice, was training myself to, to know what an expanded state of awareness feels like. And, uh, and that's, that is the key to this day is creating space in our busy minds to connect with spirit, to, to allow higher consciousness, to put thoughts in, and images in our heads. Yeah. I, in our, in our the, awareness, in our awareness. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've always appreciated about you is this, this absolute knowledge and belief that everyone has it. Right. And, and the way I look at it is um, I've always known it's there. Right. And some people have an easier time. So I tried to study physics. I was horrible at it. I hated physics. I couldn't do it. My main <laughs> my, it's just not my thing. And I didn't have an interest in it. And it was not naturally there. And it's the same with this connection. Right. Some people naturally have some people pick up physics. It makes sense to them and they're off to the races and they're interested in it. And it's the same with this, which is if I tried to learn physics, if I, if I worked at it, I could do it, right? Yeah, if I was willing exactly. to do the work, yeah. Yeah. I could do it. Yeah. And some people just have a more natural affinity to it. And, but yet everyone can do it if you're willing to put the effort and time. I truly believe that. Yeah. yeah. And so you're now willing, right? And so you're, you're, you're by yourself though without a teacher, without a mentor saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. What well, was it was still just to connect with Susan. And I still hadn't made the connection with Susan, but I started to have these experiences in meditation of a greater reality. I mean, hearing voices that weren't my own, not scary voices at all. They were so loving. And then feeling that love. Now we're talking about what it is that fills that hole that was within me all the time. And, and I, I have a phrase, what is awakening? Awakening is going from an emptiness that can't be filled to a fullness that can't be contained. Mm. And that has been my journey because sometimes I'm just so overflowing with joy and love of, that I don't know what to do with it. So I just, I'd say I spew it all over everybody, you know, <laughs> and it's genuine. Um, yeah. It, and I never knew that till I experienced that feeling through sitting in not the silence, but the power that, that breathes you and me. That's the beautiful. mediumship, the mediumship is, is a wonderful thing. It's very healing work for others. It's not the easiest thing in the world to deal with people who are hurting. And I've been dealing this week with people lashing out at me from their very human stories and mm. feeling very human at times this week. So I'm a little more subdued than normal, but there is a lesson in there for all of us. So I, I'm so happy to have discovered, yes, I am this human, but I'm also a soul. 
And so when this human is saying, God, that hurt, then I just kind of shift back and say, well, that's because that person's hurting. Yeah. Now, but you're not either that person or the Suzanne story. Let's rise up to just be the light. If I didn't have that awareness right now, I would quit this work. I would quit because mm. who needs it? You know, who yeah. needs that? And whew, I have to take a deep breath because it's not about me. And it's about the healing potential in all of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, um, I worked in hospice for a while, Ooh, for a long time. <laughs> well, and what it was, was again, it was like, I, I could hold that space where a lot of people couldn't. And uh, I, our uh, experience and thoughts about death in this country are not, are, are really broken, right? They're really, there's just not a lot of space for that. And, and people do lash out. And it is hard to be the recipient because you're like, I'm just sitting here. Like, I, <laughs> I was here to be of service. And, and, it, and yet you understand, right? They're, they're hurting. And, and instead of lashing out at what they're hurting about, they need a target and they've chosen me or yeah. today you. And, and still, you are Suzanne and I am Leslie. And it never feels good when someone says that. Yeah, but this gives us the greatest opportunity to practice what we know right? Yeah. You just take a deep breath and just be love. And it's, wow, it's amazing. It's so antithetical to the human, normal human reaction. You know, we want to, I haven't wanted to lash out and return actually, which I, I'm really grateful for. I see a little growth there, <laughs> but at the same time, I'd like to get to the point where it doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah and I, I appreciate, uh, We'll get into, you do Sanaya Says, and it's a channeling, and we'll talk about that, I guess. But today's one was this idea that you and me and every human being are part of a whole, right? Like the fingers of a hand, and why, yeah. would, why would the thumb hurt the rest of the hand? And I, I received, I read those, and I received that, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And it just, it really filled me. And I mean, whether I can do that once I get out of the house, right? <laughs> whole different yeah, and it, as I'm thinking about that right now you know this finger from this perspective I'm looking at the screen he's a separate finger over here uh -huh. when we shift our perspective that's when we say oh they're connected yeah. but I couldn't see that when I thought we were separate oh my gosh it's all connected yeah. wait till we pass and we go oh my gosh we were all just these light beings and the light is all just connected I miss that. <laughs> yeah. I, I want us to help to know that while we're here. So, yeah. so one of my questions, I guess, for you is how do you balance those two things, right? I don't, um, we, we talked before we started recording, the idea of it's so easy to get filled with the light and filled with that. And then how do you balance that filled with paying your bills, showing up, right? And, and living in this world, how do you hold that? Because that's my task as a soul. I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do it right, you know? And so I would just stay aware that I am both, like two sides of a coin. I am human and I'm soul. The soul is so much bigger, but we can't keep our focus on it while we're human. We're supposed to be here for a reason. If I'm still breathing and I can't stop breathing unless I force it, I can't stop it. So I guess I have more lessons to learn. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to try to find that perfect balance between the human stuff and the spirit. It's that old saying, you know, what happens when you awaken? Before you awaken, you chop wood, carry water. After you awaken, you still have to chop wood, carry water. Uh, somebody was saying something about me that they just don't know in my heart, you know, and I said, you know, I still clean my own toilets. I still dust the house and vacuum the house. Yeah. We're all human. We all have to do this human stuff. We all bleed the same, hurt the same, cry the same, yet happily, when you know there's another side to you, you're not stuck at being human. I can say, I don't like this feeling anymore enough. I'm going to go sit in the power. And then you just balance it out that way by... Ah, taking that deep breath and remembering who we are. Don't even have to sit in the power. That deep breath just immediately brings you back to center. These are the tools that I share with people 
because that's what it's about empowering others i don't want people following around following me around i want to empower them to get these tools and use them so they don't need me you know yeah so how do you handle uh tragedy is i mean you could talk about tragedy in a global level right when when you 9-11 or the are taught you know people there's the people keep murdering and all of that anger how do you hold that like you know the big question why yeah why? why why because life is an ongoing process from the moment when the great potential of all that is erupted and became elements like hydrogen and 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 then combined with other elements and then we have water and then it became life forms and then it became animals and then it became sentient human beings who now are aware of our soul this is evolution it's an ongoing process in the past we thought it was okay to to kill and marauder and to enslave people we no longer feel that way now we're just becoming more and more enlightened as a species so we look around us and what we see when we see in human acts well actually they're very human acts what we need to do is become more soul acts in human form to say that's not right we're not going to stand for this anymore and you're seeing that happen more and more and this is evolution so these things are this awakening as humans that we need to love each other is happening more and more than we saw in the past but it doesn't happen overnight so is there evil in this world you betcha from people that haven't yet realized that this is a process and we need to get with the program as we used to say in the military and start coming from the heart in everything that we do so i i'm grateful for programs like yours that allow us to share what our hearts already know that it's all about the evolution of the soul and it's love that will change everything it sounds so pollyanna it really does but it's true and but I think one of the things I really appreciate about you is it, it, it can get into this, like the rolling over, like when you just love them, right? It doesn't mean you don't stand up to injustice, yeah. right? It doesn't mean you don't say no. It doesn't oh, mean absolutely. you don't fight for what is right. Yeah. It means you fight for what is right with love. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I feeling, I'm feeling complete, but I want to, I want to ask if there's anything, we didn't talk about Sanaya. And so I'm, I'm curious about, so, so you've meditated and the thing I got to tell you, from what I remember, you did something like meditate for two years before you felt a connection. Yes. I don't, I, I need a little more <laughs> quickly. What do you mean? I am so amazed that you stuck at it. For two years. Oh, because of these wonderful little experiences, before I felt that, before I brought through an actual spirit who had passed who I didn't know, okay. that was the two years. But in that time, I can remember having these, you know, all of a sudden I'm in meditation and my body's rocking and I'm sitting on the boat and I'm saying, some, somebody must have just gone by in the boat to cause waves and to come out of it and say to my husband, somebody just wake the boat. And he said, no, the boat wasn't rocking. And I'm like, I was rocking. And then to have my fingers start twitching on its own in meditation, real cool experiences and then knowing things that kept me coming back for more. I didn't realize that was the training ground for mediumship. Those moments of bliss, that's what brought me coming back for more. And I had learned to ask questions. I didn't know who was answering them. I didn't call it my spirit guides or angels at the time because the military side of me, I just want to connect with Susan, you know? Then I come to find we do have spirit guides, but I'm afraid to talk about that because that sounds woo-woo, you know? But I, the more I ask the question, who am I in that daily meditation? And the answer didn't come in words. It came with this rush of love. And I'm seeing colorful lights in my mind's eye. In answer to the question, who am I? Then it gets me asking a question, why am I seeing lights? And why am I feeling this rush of love when I ask, who am I? And, and this is why I feel it was a gift to me that I was raised with no religion. I didn't have to undo traditional thoughts and fear-filled thoughts of if you don't believe this, this is going to happen. And God is exactly like this. that fits in some box. My new definition of our source is 
It can't fit in any box. And it's, oh, We are offline. Got you and there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, sometimes the internet does what the internet does. <laughs> when I was doing a podcast with the folks from Hemisync, it was the energy was so wonky that um, they said we have to do a total redo. And the guy came back and said, I tested every everything and it's all fixed now it's all fixed no problem and we test and we did it again and it happened again so i think it's something in the energy <laughs> so do you, yeah that'd be interesting to know the ways in which spirit right and the energy of that has a reaction to wireless and internet yeah. and yeah because i was looking into just like how that affects our human body we pretend that it doesn't do anything Mm -hmm. Yet I know that energy has a big effect. It sure does. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know how we're going to get rid of wireless, but we'll, whatever. <laughs> I can't go there now. <laughs> um, okay. So tell me a little bit about Tanaya. Well, they're a collective consciousness, male and female higher ups, I would say, in the higher consciousness realm. Uh, they're guides of sorts, but uh, they just can speak, they can get through my filter and communicate with me. And they give me evidence all the time that I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. So in surrendering my, my need for pure evidence, I just say, I'm here for you. And they dictate to me these beautiful messages. And when I really get out of the way in an expanded deep meditation state, I can just open my mouth and they speak through me. And it's really unusual for me to do that. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't always comfortable with it. I'm still not completely comfortable with the process, but I see the healing effect that it has on other people. And um, so I continue to do it. So what do you mean, message. what do you mean you're not, I mean, it, what, what is uncomfortable about? Uh, well, I see channeling. I've seen videos of me doing it and I completely change. My, my gestures change. You know, I'm looking around. I'm not really controlling what's going on. I get this really awful little sneer in my lip that I can't even replicate. They do it to me. And I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. Uh, there's a bit of control. I can stop it. But uh, it's, it's like stepping off a cliff and not knowing what's there. But I trust this connection. And, it, and so many people who listen to them, who read their words, it touches their hearts. And so I do it. I honor yeah, that. The amount of surrender for someone who spent decades with mind <laughs> over matter and you can do it, power and do it. And the amount of surrender that it would make, take anyone to do that, let alone with your background, yeah. is an amazing gift. I, I can just understand how far you have to get to and then to be public about it, you know, I have a lot of, you know, I don't know if it's past life. I don't, I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of persecution, right? I feel very guarded about my own beliefs and nervous about being coming the target, which is what you talked about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> and you get to know that you get to be of service. And so I, I just, I want to say thank you for your service that you're doing for yourself, for the world. And, and to continue to show up, right? It's, it's all of these pieces that come together that, that if you're helping one person, you've helped someone, right? That's it. That's what I said. When, when we went to a, re, a medium and before I knew I was going to be a medium one day and she brought through Susan, changed my life. And I said, if I could do that for one other person, it would be worth it. And I've done it for thousands now. And it's, it's, a, it's such a gift to be that conduit for the spirit world. What was yeah. the proof? 
Tell me a little bit about your first and that meeting. reading with Susan. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just listened to it the other day. I didn't know I still had the cassette recording and I, <laughs> I found it and I popped it in. I played it the other day and I, I knew I remembered it, but it was so cool to hear it again. The medium didn't know who we had on the other side. And she said, there's a young woman here who died rather suddenly in her twenties. Mm. And she, and she said, and I suddenly had the, the headache of Zeus and Athena. And Zeus is the God holding a lightning bolt. And Susan died in her twenties very suddenly. And she said, and she's wearing a brown uniform. My gosh, there's no way she could have known that. No way. And she said, oh, she's bringing a little child with you who she wants to introduce to you. I, I had been telling everybody that she said right away and it's a little baby boy, but she didn't. She said, I can't tell if it's a girl or a boy. Well, we knew it was a boy, but she said this little child's hanging back, sucking their thumb as if, as if he doesn't know you. Wow, Susan had, was pregnant with a boy. And yeah. to me, that, that, that was off the charts, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's my goal. When I do reading these days, I want people to say every time, there's no way she could have known that and that and that. Yes. Well, was it, it, you said high, high target, high value target? Oh, high value targets, right? <laughs> I, I mean, any medium could bring, th say, yeah, you have great grandparents on the other side or look at your age and say, yeah, your grandparents are here and they love you so much. And that's the, I hear skeptics in my mind. I hear, I hear what they might think as I'm giving a reading. How's this going to sound to them? So I scan the field. Is there a, oh, high value targets, the Navy term. The term that I use <laughs> in class now is highest healing potential. Mm. Those loved ones with the highest healing potential. The Navy term is high value target. That would be the aircraft carrier versus the frigates, you know. <laughs> but in mediumship term, it's, it's come on mediums. If you were that, that sitter coming for a reading, who has the highest healing potential? Is it your grandmother or is it your husband who passed? Is it your grandfather or is it you have a child on the other side? Could be your grandmother if she raised you like a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm not discounting grandparents at all. I'm just saying the spirit world knows and they're going to show up. But if we're not open to looking for that, everybody who's here, we take the easy way out and just go for grandparents. We may miss an incredible healing opportunity. And I think just the intention alone is saying whatever shows up, whatever is in the highest healing. Yes. And that's just such, I mean, that sounds like a perfect meditation, right? How do I show up to my day of whatever is in the highest healing? Yes. I, I just did an interview the other day and the person said they went to John of God and this woman said, I'm not here for any reason. I just want what is in my greatest good. And this other woman said, watch out because that may come in a way you don't want it. And I was like, yeah, that's why I pray. May my lessons be as painless as possible. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Yes. So thank you so much for spending your time with me and for the work you're doing. I really, I really honor it and appreciate it. And um, I love your energy. Can I just sit here with you for a while? More? You can, you <laughs> can. Absolutely. And so in the podcast and the notes, I will have how to get a hold of Susan, uh, how to get her books. By the way, I really appreciate your books. I've only, I have, um, I'm reading Wolf's message right now. Um, I think that's what it's called. Um, Yep. And, and so I really appreciate how, and I know how hard it is to write. And so your just your willingness to keep doing all of this work. And oh, my, my new book still right here just came out and people, what people don't realize is we need to thank my husband too, because it takes over six months to write a book and it's every day for hours a day. And it's, I think that's the hardest part about writing a book is the discipline to sit in. Oh my God, you, you get so excited when you start and then it's like, there's so much more in my head that needs to come out and in my heart that I want to share. But So I want to just thank my husband because he sacrifices a lot. Well, yeah, especially since the two of you had retired. You're not doing this oh. because you need an income. You're not doing this because you wanted to become something. You are solely doing this as a form of service. Yeah, and, and it's so hard because I do get an income from the books, but we give, we give scholarships and people don't know this. They don't know this and people make assumptions, but that's another whole story. But yeah, I'm working harder now that I retired from the Navy than I think I ever did in the Navy. But it, it's, it's a different kind of work because I couldn't not do this. It's, it's amazing to connect with people 
and to help to see their healing i couldn't not do this and, and i would you know if they don't have to pay me for that yeah i couldn't not do this yeah yeah that's beautiful so yeah. thank you all so much thank and you, um it is an absolute honor and uh if you want to get a hold of Suzanne, all of my, her information will be in the liner notes and I will post it everywhere so that they can find you. If you know, it's just, that's the other piece. When they are called to you, they will find you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and you, I hope that they flock to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.